Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It might be a little dreary outside, but the sun is shining in here. Amen. 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 I first want to thank, um, uh, first of all, thank you, Pastor Tucker, Dr. Tucker, for um, being our pastor. We love you. Thank you for your support. I want to thank the deaconess. Deaconess Margie Washington, who is the chairwoman of the Deaconess Board, thank you for the opportunity to come before the church today. Thank you so much. Amen. And I have to also mention that I was, you know, I although I had to minister today, I needed to be ministered to. So yesterday I was ministered to. So I want to thank all the ladies who ministered yesterday. You did a great job in blessing the soul. Amen. Amen. So, uh, without further ado, we're going to get to God's Word, and um, the scripture comes from Matthew 5, 14 through 16 in the New International Version. Everybody stands if you don't mind. Yes, Matthew 5, 14 to 16, a stand for God's Word. I'm going to be taking it from the New International Version. Good to see you up front, my, my girl right here. Good to see you up front. <laughs> Right? Which reads thusly, you are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Mm. Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. Verse 16, in the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Amen? Amen. Let's look to the Lord in the word of prayer. Father God, I just thank you for this day, Lord God. I thank you for good health. I thank you for the good health of all of these people here today. I thank you, Lord God, for them not looking at the weather, but believing that your word is more important than the weather. I thank you for that, Lord God. Lord God, I pray that you would uh, crucify anything that's in me, that when I deliver your word that they would see you and not me Thank you. in the name of Jesus. And Lord God, I pray that if there's anyone here today that does not know the Lord Jesus Christ and the pardon of their sins, that they would yield and say, what must I do to be saved? Thank you. Now, Lord, please give glory and honor to yourself. For in Jesus Christ's name, I do pray that all God's people say amen. 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 Um, when Deacon S. Washington asked me to be to minister today, she um, I told she told me what the theme was, which is let the sun shine in. Yeah. That's been the theme of the Deacon S. Fellowship all this weekend. So when I asked her, did she want to give me a scripture too? Did she want to get? She said no, because yeah. lots of times I explained to her when you go out to minister, there are some churches who do give you. I mean, I've been given. The theme, I've been told what scripture to you know, minister from, the whole nine. So she said, no, just let the Lord lead you to whatever you wanted to do. So I thank her for that. Amen. Amen. But the Lord kept leading me to this passage of scripture. All of his records, all of his recorded messages, I should say, the Sermon on the Mount where Jesus taught the standard for Christian, Christianity is the longest and most famous. He delivered his message to the multitudes who were following him. But we learn from verse first 1 and 2 that he was particularly speaking to his disciples. All right. And that's important to know because the words spoken were really meant specifically for those who were believers. Mm -hmm. So that's us too. Amen? Amen. Amen. The sermon was a sermon to his people about the way we should behave the way we should live, and who we are in him. All right. Mm -hmm. I believe it was Daniel Duriani, mm -hmm. the vice president and professor of the, of the theology, theology, the, I'm sorry, the, theology, theology, <laughs> theology, theology, no, no, I'm not trying to say that. The no. professor of theology, no. that's what I'm saying, <laughs> at Covenant Theological okay. Seminary, okay. who said that, among Jesus' teachings, okay. the Sermon on the Mount is perhaps the most beloved, the best known, 
and the least understood. Wow. But this is me here. It's the hardest to obey. Amen. Amen. It is the hardest to obey. Basically, the Sermon on the Mount, which also consists of the Beatitudes in verses 3 to 12, is saying, this is how a disciple of Jesus Christ lives. Amen? Amen. Throughout the sermon, Jesus uses various parables to make his message understandable to everyone. One of the images that Jesus verbally painted for us appears in Matthew 5, 14 to 16, which are the verses that we're going to focus on today. Amen. 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 Now, though I was given a title or a theme by the deaconess, my title will be centered around more reigniting the shine in your life. Reigniting the shine in your life. That passage of scripture teaches us the importance of letting the light of the gospel shine in us. God has created you and me to shine light into a dark world. How many of you know that the world is dark? And we've all experienced some darkness, haven't we? We've experienced the darkness of selfishness, depression, anger, violence, the darkness of greed, shady politics, shady politicians, the darkness of poverty, racial protest, war, the darkness of sadness and despair. The darkness of evil and hopelessness. The darkness of thinking what's popular is more important than what is right. Amen? As believers, we know from prior experience that when dark times come in us and the spiritual clouds hang over us, behind the clouds, the sun still shines. In the midst of all the darkness and uncertainty, we're reminded that Jesus calls us not to hide, but to be light in a dark world. And he wasn't saying, do that someday when you get your act together. He was saying to do it now. Now, whether we like it or not, God calls you and me to shine our light. Amen? And while he was on earth, Jesus was the light of the world. But we Christians have been made his representatives. And we have been entrusted with the message of the gospel. So now he's calling us light. Amen? We have been empowered. You might not know. See, some of us don't know who we are. We have been empowered by the indwelling of the Holy Spirit to shine and expose the evil works of darkness. We have a job to do. We are called to intercede for sinner and saint alike. Yes, ma'am. And we are privileged to be partnered with God. Amen? Yes, ma'am. It's a privilege. So don't ever underestimate who you are in Christ. Because Jesus calls you the light of the world. Now I see a few points to this scripture of the people, the position, and the purpose. Anyone who accepts Jesus Christ as their Savior, they become a part of the Lord's family. So if you have accepted Christ, you're one of his people. Amen? Amen. Look with me in verse 14, which reads, you are the light of the world. Did you know you were the light of the world? I know now. The very first word is you. Isn't that amazing? It's amazing that the Lord Jesus is calling us, the pe- us the people, the light of the world. Amen. It's one of the greatest compliments God Amen. could ever Amen. give us. Amen. In John 9, 5, he calls himself the light of the world. Mm-hmm. And now he's calling us the very same thing he called himself. Amen. You know what he's saying here? Do you know what he's saying here? He is saying... I want you to be like myself. And I I know that's a a huge request, to be like Christ. Some of us are thinking right now, how could we ever be like Christ? He's perfect. We're never perfect. How can we be like Christ? I believe God wants us to strive for perfection, but he doesn't expect us to be perfect in the sense that we never sin. He doesn't expect that. He knows we're going to sin. But he made the provision for us with Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Amen. But that doesn't mean that we shouldn't keep the bar up high for ourselves. Keep the bar up high. 
We cannot accomplish moral perfection in this life, but we can make progress. So we should focus on the progress. You know why? Because God sees our progress and he delights in it. He's a gentle and sympathetic father. He loves us. He sees and knows our shortcomings. And that's why every day we need what? His grace and his mercy. God loves us so much that he sent his, his son to die on the cross for our sins. While we were sinners, he died. Amen? His love is unconditional. He loves us in spite of our disobedience. In spite of our weakness, in spite of our sin, and in spite of our selfishness. He loves us enough to provide a way to an abundant and eternal life. We ought to be happy about that. Remember from the cross, he cried out, Father, forgive them, for they what? No, not what they do. Our relationship with God is not based on our perfection. If it was that, we'd all be in trouble. We'd all be in trouble. He sees us as perfect because of Jesus. We couldn't be perfect in our own strength. It's in Jesus. You know? Yes, ma'am. God knows at some point we're going to mess up. But we're his people, so when we mess up, where is he? He's right there waiting with his loving arms to wrap around us and help us through our mess. Amen? Have you ever shown up for anybody here? Yes, ma'am. Plenty of time. He knew. He knew. Look at his disciples. He knew that they were going to make mistakes. He knew Jesus was going to, uh, Judas was going to betray him, didn't he? Yes, ma'am. And he knew Peter was going to deny him three times, yes, didn't he? Knew. Yes, ma'am. But that didn't stop Jesus from nurturing and ministering to them. Can you imagine if Pastor Tucker stopped nurturing and ministering to us when we mess up? Mm-hmm. All right. He won't do it. He won't do it because he's called to pastor us. Jesus saw the shortcomings and faults of all his disciples. But Jesus knew that they could still do so much good in spite of their flaws. And so can we. So can we. Unfortunately, Judas did commit suicide because he couldn't live with what he had done. But Peter was able to move past. Yes, yes. His mistakes and preached the gospel successfully for many years. I like that. I like that. Peter moved. He, he got past it. That's why we got to get past stuff. We get, we get stuck in stuff and don't want to move past it, but the Lord has forgiven us, so we got to get past it. You got to think of all the imperfect people God used in the Bible. David, the adulterer and murderer. He could have hit out on Uriah's. <laughs> wife, uh, Uriah's uh, wife, Bathsheba, because he wanted Bathsheba, so he put a hit out on her husband. Right, on her husband. Noah got drunk. Noah got drunk. Rahab was a prostitute. Yes. Samson was a womanizer. That's right. And of course, we know about Steve Peter denying Christ twice. That's right. And Paul, he persecuted Christians. That's right. But God used them anyway. That should be an encouragement to you and I because we know all the stuff, all the mess we did. He can still use. Us today, amen. We gotta, we gotta be that, be like Larry Live's song. I wanna be used by you, God. You made it brand new. Thank you, God. We gotta do that. We gotta do what Larry Live's song says. That's that. Use me, Lord. I wanna be used by you, God. Amen. Throughout Scripture, we've read how God uses imperfect people to accomplish His purpose. Imperfect people. He rarely called the rich, the popular, the influential. No. But he called flawed people like you and I. That's right. The bottom line is we are all imperfect. Amen. But remember the saying, and you keep this in your mind, God doesn't call the qualified. God qualifies the call. Ah. Amen. Ah. So, so if, if, if he calls it, he, he will prepare you to do what it is he wants you to do. Amen? Amen. And we can do what he asks us to do through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. We'll get it. We'll be able to do what he asks us to do. He equips us with the power of the Holy Spirit. He equips us with his word.
word. And you might think they're bad, but he equips us from our past experience. No matter what it was, he can, God can take what it was and mess up it as it was and use it to his glory. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. None of us are perfect. Still, God is calling his people the light of the world. When wow. you walk out of here today, you better recognize who you are. In I know that's right. The Greek word for light is phos. Yes, ma'am. P H O S means yes, to shine. That's right. And make manifest, clear, plain, and perfect. That's right. That's right. That's right. So in a world that has gone into the deep. Deepest darkness, hasn't it? Right. You're right, you're right. Christ says we are the luminary. We are the God. We are the one who will deliver this world from darkness. That, that we just have to be willing to do it. Amen? That's a privilege. That's a privilege. We ought to be excited about that right now. You know, we underestimate who we are. <laughs> This is more than simply reflecting the light of the Savior. The implication here is that we actually become like ourselves. We become like we become the light of God. Amen? Amen. God intends to get his work done on earth today. But we have to do it. You know, it's not just the pastors and the missionaries who are light. It's everybody who loves the Lord. Who in here loves the Lord? Oh, you are light. You're light. I'm telling you, you are light. Don't, don't, don't get scared. God takes ordinary people and uses them to share his message to those who need him. They may not know they need him, but based on everything I see on CNN, they need him. Amen? You and me were saved to shine. Don't hide your testimony. Don't be afraid to pray in public. Don't be afraid to share the gospel. So what does it mean for us to reflect God's light? It means that when people see us and interact with us, it should be like an interaction with our Father. They should get what he's like through us. Yes, ma'am. Amen? Amen. The world doesn't know the depth of God's love. As believers, we need to open our eyes and be aware of every single person God puts in our pathway. Yes, ma'am. Our relatives, our friends, our neighbors, our co-workers, the people in the supermarket, the people we run into at the gym. You're right. Amen? People we see at the bank. You're right. It's the world. They need love. Mm-hmm. They need encouragement. They need, they need hope. hope. They need us. <laughs> they need us. They need yeah. us to be the light of Christ. Amen? Yeah. We are to be Jesus with flesh on. Mm. Amen? Amen? When you think of yourself as that, you will go out and allow yourself to be used. Think of yourself as Jesus with flesh on to every single human being that you may come in contact with. Mm, I like that. Amen? Yes. The part B of verse 14 says, a town built on a hill cannot be hidden. And it's followed by verse 15, which says, neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. So I, I can see why that theologian said that sometimes it could be hard to understand because Jesus speaks in parables. But we're going to try to break it down a little bit, which brings me to my second point, the position. Mm -hmm. Light is to give direction by making it possible to see, right? Mm -hmm. At night, a city on a hill shines its light in all directions and is in an elevated position. Mm -hmm. The light can be seen far and wide, illuminating the way for many travelers, showing them the way. Mm -hmm. Showing them the way. Showing them the way. You, 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 I, I think my sister Linda here got it. Showing them the way. Amen? So, so here Jesus compared Christians to a city on a hill that cannot be hidden because kingdom people are meant to be a beacon of light providing spiritual light to the lost and dying world. You're preaching. Amen? You're preaching real good. Verse 
15 reads, neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Now, now who would understand that if you don't go figure out, study it? Instead, they put it on a stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. Mm -hmm. In other words, it wouldn't make sense to light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Imagine that. Put it under a bowl. Oh, maybe a clear bowl, huh? I'm not talking about a clear bowl. There's always an exception, right? I'm just talking about clear. Yeah, that's right. So, you have to put it on the lamp stand. Jesus tells the parable of the lamp on the stand to encourage us to stand out. He wants to stand out, to be an example. Don't hide. He doesn't want us to hide. Jesus is saying that for the Christian message to spread throughout the world and develop, followers must be in a position themselves to proclaim and show their faith, not hide it. Yeah. Not hide it. You know, this, this would have been a challenge for people in the first church because they were persecuted. So if they weren't hiding their faith, they could have been killed, tortured, right. and killed. That's right. But as far as I know, they're not doing that in the United States. I know they're doing a lot of other things. Right. But I don't think they're persecuting us for saying we love the Lord and let me tell you about Christ. Let me lead you to Christ. I don't think we're being persecuted. Yeah. It, it would have been a problem for them, but not for us. Right. Staying silent about our faith is not an option for a believer. Yeah. It's just not. Yeah. We are ambassadors Amen. for Christ. That's right. That's right. And although it may be comfortable for some of us to be secret yeah. disciples, <laughs> it's comfortable for some of us to be secret disciples. Jesus is saying here that if you want to be my child, you must let your light shine. You must be set like you must be lit up on the city or on a hill in the city. Light is to be revealed, not concealed. That's what he's telling you. All right, all right, all right. Now, whether you're comfortable with it or not, we must realize that Alliterate. other believers are watching us. Yes. They are observing us. That's right. You, you know what I'm saying? They, they're, they're watching us. They're waiting for us to mess up and do something wrong. That's right. That's why they're often the ones that point out when we are not consistent with who we say we are. That's correct. They're That's the first correct. ones to point out. That's correct. You know, you know what they say when they see one of us doing something wrong? You're supposed to be a Christian. <laughs> they're the first to point out. And that's because if we mess up a goal, they're first to point out because they are watching us. They're watching us. Amen? Amen? What the Lord is saying is that the primary duty of light is to be seen. Mm. To shine. To shine. Right. We cannot be in a secret <clears throat> discipleship. It's a contradiction. Yes. It's illogical. Amen. You know what I'm saying? You can't be a follower of Christ and nobody knows about it. <laughs> <laughs> nobody knows about it. Amen? Amen. And when, you know, let me tell you what secret disciples are. Secret, they're people who believe in Jesus. Some, it might be something here. I don't know. Secret disciples are people who believe in Jesus. They believe he's the real deal. But they're reluctant to take a public stand for him. They're re reluctant to confess publicly and live their lives openly as a follower of Christ. You know, they, they got it themselves, but sometimes they're reluctant to show it to other people. And then it could be for different reasons. It could be that they, they believe they're going to lose some friends because of it. You know what I'm saying? It's not because they think we're going to be killed no. or tortured. No. You know, I'm just thinking maybe the reason could be that they're afraid um, that their friends, you know. Because you know when you got saved, you know how some of your friends treated you, don't you? Yeah, I remember that. You remember how some of your trade friends treated you? Yes, I do. You know, Both even some of even some of our own relatives, you know. Right. You, 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 you stop it. That we don't want, no, no, you want some beer? No, we don't want any beer. We don't drink anymore. <laughs> And, and they constantly, every time they see you, I can't, like they can't wait for you to get out of that Christian thing and start having a drink with me. Uh, uh, Am I right? You're right. They can't wait. To, but, to, but if you're a, a secret disciple, that's called, that's what he means by hiding your life under a bowl. Yes. Yes. People know we go to church. You know, they know that. They see us coming to church. 
But he said we are the light of the world. So that means we are to be visible behind those doors. Yes. And we all know we all we all we good here. Everybody here. But what about out there? Yes. You know, I, I remember he's not here today. One of the short fellas went out on the inside, his last name is short. Yeah. <laughs> one of the short fellas, uh, we had a guy coming here with him one day. And the, and the guy looked like he had, he he been having a terrible night, and um, brother Short told me, you know, you know, people out asking for money. He asked him for a few dollars, and uh, brother Short said, um, okay, I'll give I'll give you a couple dollars, but I want you to do something for me. You come in church with me, in service. You know, sometimes you you gotta use that by any means necessary thing. Amen. The guy came in. I'm not saying you go out and pay people to come to church, but but the Lord laid that on his heart. That day. that's what the, how the Lord used him. You know, you, you do something for me. Come on in here. The guy set through the whole service, and we don't know what impact that might have had on that guy's life. We don't know. Amen. So we have to be visible beyond these doors. He got that guy off the street. Mm. There's no such thing as a covert Christian, mm. a clandestine discipleship. There's no reclusive approach to godly living. You know, God doesn't want us to isolate ourselves from the world and hide in the church. He doesn't want us to do that. Because sometimes when people do that, you know, not here in other churches, everybody knows everybody. It's like a little club. And, um, you know, they start to be a, a feeling superior to, you know, am I right here? Sometimes start to try to, you know, <laughs> act like, you know, they all self-righteous. You know, I'm not like you, you know. You know, there's people like that. God didn't tell us to do that. He don't want us to do that. Christians, it's not a members only club. It's a body of Christ. It's not members only. It's a body of Christ. We are Jesus' modern day disciples. That's correct. That's Think correct. of yourself as a disciple for Christ. Modern day. Modern day. You're right. our, our new technique is going to be different. That's correct. You know, just like the, the guy who, who got the guy off the street, he used something different. Right. To, right. To, to bring him in here. So our, our approach is going to be different. That's correct. Amen? Amen. The theology is going to be the same, but our approach is going to be different. Amen? That's correct. That's correct. That's correct. But you know what? I think, and, and even now, I'm, I'm feeling in my spirit. Some of us lack the confidence to be light. But please don't estimate, underestimate who you are in Christ. And don't let anybody else underestimate you either. When you're shining in light and doing the work of the Lord, you know the enemy's going to come and to remind you of your past. That's correct. You always run to people who want to remind you of your past. Yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. But I'm asking you, don't fall for that. Mm -hmm. Don't fall for that. As a Christian, you, your past doesn't define you. You are a new creation in Christ. That's right. That's Amen? Right. Amen. Right. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. Yeah, that's it. That's you are loved. That's you are forgiven. That's and it. you are to shine. Yes. Amen. Amen? Amen? God wouldn't have called us light if he didn't think he could do it. Wow. You're right. He wouldn't have called us that. We can do it. You are intelligent, powerful beings. Jesus calls us the light of the world. So not only do I see the people in the position, Pastor, I don't want to take up too much time here. Take your time. I also see the purpose, which is my third and final point. <clears throat> in the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. That's the whole purpose of it all, right? Mm -hmm. That people would see the light in us, the good in us, how we're helping people, how we're praying for people, how we're caring about people, how we're bringing people to church. Amen? Amen. Amen. How we're helping those out in need. Amen. Those are type of good deeds. that You can only do those things pretty much if you're a child of the king. Because the Holy Spirit will give you that power to do the things that you would normally do. Amen? That's right. That's right. Our purpose is to shine. The good deeds that we're talking about is after salvation. 
But prior to that, we, you know, that, that wasn't what good deeds were. He's talking about the good deeds once you became a born again Christian. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. You know, those are the good deeds that will glorify the Father. You know, and we're not doing it. We got to make sure we're not doing it for ourselves, to promote ourselves. We're doing it to promote the Lord. And, and I know that that's hard to, to do sometimes because we're not we're not wired like that. So we're, we're wired to, to 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 hope people think well of us, you know. And then although we might say, yeah, I don't care what they think, I don't care what they. I mean, I used to be one of those people, you know. If somebody could say, I, I I could find out somebody didn't care for me, and I know I didn't know that person. I interact with interact with them ever for them to even know anything about me. I would say, I don't care. You know, but that's not what God wants us to do. Right. You know, yeah. He doesn't want us to say, I don't care. Maybe I should, like my husband's that person, he walk up to a person and ask, Did I do something to you? <laughs> yeah, he did it with a neighbor. Mm -hmm. He did it with a neighbor. And, and we, we, you know, me, they all know him. They don't know me. <laughs> that's me, night and day. We are night and day. Because I told them up front, those people get the no look wave. I said, so I ain't got to wave to them because they don't know that I didn't do it. <laughs> you know, they like it. They great with the no look wave. But my, my, my husband, he's the type, this woman wasn't speaking to him. Like, he, ain't had to, he had to tell me who the woman was. That's how much I don't know those people around here. So he goes to the person. He said, he waited until she was with her husband. The husband always spoke to him. He told me, because I didn't know whether they were speaking to me or not, because like I said, I didn't bother with them. But he said, he went to her and said, you mind me telling me this story? Like, he, went, he went up to the, I asked him that, because he tells stories about me without my permission. So that's why I'm asking is it's okay if I tell this story. He, he went up to the woman when she went up and said, Miss, can, can I ask you a question? Um, Your husband always speak to me. Did, did I send you somehow? And, Cause you never, you never speak to me. She basically said, "I know I only speak to you." Basically, basically, right? Well, he, he said, well, "What did I ever do to you?" Well, you won't believe this. This is the truth. I know you are a pastor, but you you got all these things. You got nice cars. You got a nice house. You know, you ride a motorcycle. Basically saying Christians aren't supposed to have nothing. I don't know what daddy she's serving, but she's not serving the daddy that I serve. Because the daddy that I serve, he blesses us exceedingly and abundantly above all things. So I don't know who she's serving, but she certainly ain't serving our Lord. Amen? She certainly is not serving our Lord. But that's a true story. That was her reason. And he explained to her and told her about the, the people in the Bible who God blessed with riches and things like that. They say, you know, God, God blesses people. And bless people. Once he showed her that, she said, oh, I didn't know that. After that, she started speaking to her. She started speaking to her. But see, I was feeling some type of way that she wasn't speaking to my husband. I'm like, you don't have to speak to me. You still don't have to. He is very forgiving. It takes me a while. That, no, I got a problem with that. That is one of my problems. Everybody here that knows me know that's one of my issues. It takes me a while. I got to do a lot of praying. I'm not forgetting all the stuff you do. Especially if you mess with one of them right there. You got a friend up right there. You messing with me. You messing with me. You got a better chance of doing something to me than them. Amen? So, 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 so I have to confess, I'm not speaking to her yet. It take a while. I need prayer. I need some, some, some holy water or something. Some holy oil. I'm not confessing good for the soul, but bad for the reputation. But I ain't thinking about that woman. He's not speaking to somebody. The way where he cared about it. I even had to talk to him. Why do you care about that? Why are you approaching her about that? <laughs> what, what do you care? He explained to me why I care too. But I still need prayer. Y'all pray for me in that area. Okay? <laughs> me too. Son died. One of her son died. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's true. My husband reminded me that this woman, the same woman, she's married to a man that had 
he's an older guy, and he had two grown children, and she's young, and with her, they had one child together. And this was prior to you talking to her, right? After. After you talked to her? Okay. Her, I think he was 16, her only child died. He committed suicide. Oh. The same woman, her wow. only child died. So my husband heard about that too, and uh, you know, he had already talked to her, and he said, you know, I'm gonna go around there, I gotta say something to her about this, you know? And um, he just, cause we see them out walking the dogs. Everybody walk dogs around here, but me. I don't, I don't have dogs. But, <laughs> but he saw her, and he, her and her husband, he went, walked up there because he had heard that her son died. And that woman just fell into his arms oh, and cried and cried, you know? So, you know, he had the light. He was showing the light. He was showing God's light. It was God's light that made her feel like, you know, I need a hug for this brother. You know, after what I did to him, how I told him I was purposely not speaking to him. For him to come around here and show me that much love, that's the light. That's the light. Me, I was still hiding under the boat. So she probably think, what, what are you doing with her? She ain't nothing like him. So that's 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 a real illustration of what we're talking about. Amen. But well, it's times that, that we, we lose our passion for the Lord. And we all do, because things happen and we say, God don't really care about me. But 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 when you when you think like that, you, you gotta repent, whatever you do and you go about whatever makes you repent and pray. You know, and, and how do you do that? By going back to your first love, which is him, right? You remember the feeling we had when we first accepted Jesus Christ as our Savior? Remember that? Oh, we were going to share him back to church. My husband and I couldn't get enough of it. You know, we, we were on the evangelism team. We had to go in these places where these people tell you to get out and talk nasty to you. But we were on fire for the Lord because we had, we had first accepted Christ and we was just, you know, we just wanted to do what we could for the Lord. We couldn't wait to tell somebody about Jesus. We couldn't wait to go to church. Well, the Lord is saying, when you have those days where you feel like he's not with you, just, just repent and pray and get back to him. Get back into the relationship you had that when you first fell in love with Jesus. Amen? That's awesome. That's a good word. And when you go back, what's he going to do? He's going to be there with open arms, loving open arms for you. So it's okay to go back. We need to reignite our light and our passion for Christ. Amen. So my brothers and my sisters, you are the light of the world. Amen. And although he tells us that sometimes we don't, we don't recognize it. We don't believe that about ourselves. Some of us are still not convinced. We all have the potential. All the God-given abilities. We have them. He called us to be light in the world. But because of our circumstances, because of what other people say, you know, they, they make you think that you're ordinary. You're limited in what you can do. You, you can never be significant. So we go through things feeling unqualified. But what did I tell you before? God doesn't do what? He doesn't call the qualified. He call, qualifies the what? So, so, you, so, so you should be saying, you should be saying, God, I want to be used by him. God, I'm the one you're looking for. Up in here. Up in here. See, see the world has to come out a little bit. You got to say, I'm the one you're looking for. Up in here. Up in here. You got to say, God, I'm your huckleberry. God. Can make a mark on this world in your name. Am I right about it? He wants you to be a light in this dark world. I need to remind you, the king is looking for you. You're a child of the king. That's favor in your life. Am I right about it? You need to be reminded that you are a masterpiece, a mighty hero. 
Right. A king's child. The royalty is in your blood. There's a crown of favor on your head. So start having a child of the king mentality. Worthy. Valuable. Yes, forgiven. Yes, and blessed. Yes, Amen. Yes, First Peter 2 9 tells us that we are chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people belonging to God. But for this purpose, that we may declare the praises of him who called us out of darkness and into his marvelous light. So I'm going to leave you with this, but I'm going to need your help on this. I'm going to need your help. So you remember to let your light shine. You all should remember the song. This little light of oh, mine. So we're gonna we're gonna end this on this little light of mine because I want to keep to keep this in your mind. This is a song we've all known as children, right? So we're gonna do a little bit of this little light of mine. I know your mama can help out because when you leave here, I want you to leave encouraged that you are the light, that you are special, that you are a king's kid. It's no lie. in your life.